Hello and welcome to Module 7, Wine, con wine, uh, wine Concepts. All right, don't forget to take your notes and submit them when you're done. All right, so um, what is a wide area network? So a wide area network is, for, as a reminder, is the interconnection of lands together. The internet, which stands for internetworking of public uh, public lands, okay? So please take a snippet of this, uh, the difference between a land and a WAN. Think of a LAN is, it could be in a building, it's an enterprise network, somebody that owns, you know, the company owns all the devices, the cables and everything, they're in control of everything. If you need to connect to another LAN and you have to pay a service provider to connect you either over the internet or a private connection, then you're talking about a WAN because the protocols that the ISP to transfer your data from your LAN to a the other remote land that is in a different geographic area has different types of um, services that they can offer you. What I'm talking about, I'm, I mean, it could be T1 line connections, it could be an ATM, it could be in PLS, whatever, or it's just setting up a VPN for you. All right, so this is the WAN. It could be public or it could be private to connect you from an enterprise or remote users could be connected to the campus, you could have a telecommuter, you could have branch offices, all right, to connect to a LAN and the service provider will allow you to do that, of course. All right, um, so <clears throat> the types of LANs that are out there, there are, what do we got? We have private, which guarantees service level, So we have private WANs, which has guarantee service level, consistent bandwidth, and security. Uh, they, and you got the public ones, which are connections over the internet. Uh, and if you're going to do that, then you have to use a VPN. So please write those down. The private WAN is a connection, uh, is guarantee service level. That's what the private WAN does, write these three things. Consistent bandwidth and security. For a public for a public WAN, you need to use, you're going over the internet, and you must use a VPN for security purposes. All right. Of course, the least expensive way is to go through the public. All right. Looking at uh, the topologies, the different types of topologies that are out there, and you got the point to point, hop and spoke, dual home, fully meshed, and partially meshed. Uh, Write these down, and I think it's pretty straightforward when you're looking at them. You'll know what point-to-point -point is. You could be over the internet or over a private network in the cloud, and site A and site B will be seen as if they are directly connected to each other. That's point-to-point, -point, right? We've been doing that um, in our labs when we connect routers directly to each other. We are trying to simulate a point to point topologies when we were doing you know we did plenty of those when we did static static routing and um and even we did that with some with uh, um OSPF all right hop and scope is when you have for example uh the headquarters and you got a whole a bunch of remote branch offices frame relay used to an old legacy protocol um a WAN protocol that used to connect in a hop and spoke I was there famous. Uh, they were famous for that. Dual home is when you have for redundancy purposes, you have two routers in case one breaks. You're all, the, you know, the remote branch offices will always connect. So this is a little bit expensive, but um, there is no central point of failure this way. So branch offices across the nation will be able to connect to the central office. This is like hop and scope but um, you may think of it like double. Fully meshed is definitely, this is the most expensive way. That means everybody connects to everyone else. There's always a path to get to everyone else. There is really no headquarters, kind of. And again, you eliminate the central point of failure. If A goes down, then these three will be able to communicate with each other. Less expensive way is, of course, like the hop and scope. You may think of it this way, partial mesh.
Okay, so those are the different types of topologies. Um, <clears throat> now we have, let's look at the carrier, carrier connections, okay? So when you do a carrier connections, that means you've got to call the, uh, uh, the service provider and you have to sign a service level agreement with them. What are they going to, you know, how much you're going to pay, what kind of service they're going to give you, what kind of guarantees and securities and all those wonderful things that you may ask for so here's a corporate you know a carrier um you have you may choose a dual carrier by the way just in case just like you chose dual routers at the site for redundancy and you may choose two separate service providers you may, you may use both of them at the same time or just you know use get connected with one and don't pay or maybe have a very very you know, just as a backup, to set it up just in case ISP one or ISP down, one goes down, and you use the other one immediately. And it's probably a good idea to do this if a lot of your work is relying on connecting to the internet, relies on the internet. So if your ISP goes out of business or they enter, you know, they bring you down or they um, they try to blackmail you, and, you know, they increase the monthly payments on you or whatever so there's always an alternative all right you don't want to all of a sudden you're disconnected and you lose a tremendous amount of money so it's better it's probably a good idea to have some redundancies even in isps so having a dual carrier is is important um evolve, evolving networks you have small networks campus branch you have campus networks then you can go up to branch or distributed networks. All of these must be adaptable, scalable, which means easy to expand, and that does not compromise security and performance. Okay, so when you are designing your LAN, you gotta make sure that they are adaptable to new technologies, scalable, and does not um, compromise security and performance. All right, in the book, they talk, they, uh, they have a fictitious company called Span Engineering, and then they start talking about that and building everything around that small. So you have a small company in a small branch office. You can have a wireless router connection. This is an easy connection. They may connect to cable or DSL connections. You may have a campus like our campus that connects to the internet using an ISP. Uh, these routers could be connected through multi-access you, know, you could have camp, you know big huge campuses multi-access with um ospf if you want <clears throat> to connect the different buildings on in the campus you can have branch offices all over the country connecting over the internet using vpns to get to wherever the regional office is a lot of companies do this believe it or not and you can without even getting having a service provider, set up your own VPN, site-to-site -site VPN. And we'll, we'll try to do that. And you can have distributed network you know, all over the world connections. So this is maybe a little bit more trickier and you probably would need um, a service provider, a global service provider that allows you to, take, you know, to do all of the to make sure that you are well connected and secured, of course, and guarantees you a certain amount of certain bandwidth, depending on where you are. All right, let's take a look at some of the WAN standards. Um, the WAN standards, well, they include the TIA, the ISO, and the IEEE. So please write those down and write what they stand for as well, because it's a good idea um, to know who they are. It, just like we've discussed um, I think we discussed this a while back in a different chapter. The WAN, just like the LAN, operates at the bottom two layers of the OSI model, the data link and the physical link. And everything from layer seven to layer three is in software. And then it's passed to the WAN NIC before it's placed on the serial port to go outside uh, to the destination. So in the... Layer one, when we're talking about the actual wires, it could be on a fiber most likely. So you'll use the synchronous digital, digital hierarchy or SONET or the dense wavelength division multiplexing. At layer two, 
um, you could have any of these, okay? So you could have DSL cable, wireless, um, the Ethernet Metro. All of these are Nixon. All of these encapsulates your packets into frames. You know, DSL and cable frame, you know, DSL frame, for example, places your packet into a PPP frame. This is PPP over Ethernet frame. This is obviously Ethernet. This is 802.11 frame. This is uh, MPLS frame, and so on, right? All right, so um, let's talk about DTEs and DCEs. I know we've discussed this when we were doing packet tracers, but this is the time to talk about that. So please take a snapshot of this. So um, a DTE device, which is refers to as the data terminal equipment, this is what you have at the here, at, uh, I'm sorry, at your premises. This is the DTE device. You need a DCE device. DCE device is the one that sets up your data to transfer you over the local loop. The word local loop means is the, or sometimes we refer to this to as the last mile. This is the connection between you and the central office. All right. Uh, this is what you actually pay for. You're paying for 200 megabits per second connection. Your connection for the local loop. That's what you're paying for. The last mile. Uh, think of the DCE device is the device like a NIC for a PC. The PC is like the data terminal. The data is terminated right there. You don't do anything with it. It's not, you know, there is nothing in there to allow it to communicate with the outside. You need a NIC. A NIC is like a DCE for a router. He's the one that sets up the data and ready to go on the, on the local loop. All right. And uh, he sets up the clock rates, how fast data is going to be transferred, and so on. Okay. Um, all, everything inside the building is called the customer premises equipment. So everything in here, the DTE devices, the DCEs, even the modem that you connect before you go outside is called the CPE, the customer premises equipment. This point right here where the responsibility of the ISP takes over is called the demarcation point, the demark point. That's where you connect your local loop to the central office switch. All right, so... Um, all right, so please write this down as well. So the central office, the last mile we talked about, and so on. Okay. All right. The CSU DSU is really a type of DCE device. So here's a whole bunch of DCE devices. Um, you got the voice band, the modem, DSL modem, cable modem is a DCE device. For a router, it could be a CSU, DSU at home, right? It, this is where the one that sets up the clock rate. And this D, CSU, DSU. Uh, you got the optical converter, wireless router would be considered as a DCE device. You know, DTE devices is like your PCs. Your modem at home is like the DCE device that converts your data and gets it ready to communicate with the, the central office. All right. All right. Now, why do we send data? When data goes outside on the WAN, we send it one bit at a time. That's called serial communication. When we do serial communication, that means we're sending one bit at a time because the bit is traveling by itself and there's hardly any interference. It can go very long distances. Um, if you do it in parallel, that means you're sending a group of eight bits at a time all eight bits have to reach the destination at the same time. So there's a very good chance. And also because of the, they might cause interference with each other, the electromagnetic interference that's caused. So the distance with parallel communication is short. If your distance is short within a LAN, you may use parallel communication. Like uh, in the old days, we used to connect our printers using, using parallel ports. Excuse me. Serial ports, you can have longer cable. And that's one of the reasons why uh, wine connections is always serial. All right, circuit switched. All right, we'll stop right here. And on the next video, we'll continue um, with circuit switching. So write everything up and I'll see you and uh, submit it and I'll see you on the next video.